Hello and welcome to Craft with Sarah. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to make from start to finish this giant wall art sign. This is a really beautiful layered paper craft project just in time for summer. It measures 20 inches wide and 10 inches tall, but don't worry, you can cut it on your Cricut machine from regular 12 by 12 US letter or A4 paper. The way it works is all of the really big pieces are done in sections, which you'll then stick together to make the base that all of the beautiful leaves and flowers can be stuck on top of. This design is available in my SVG shop, shop.craftwithsarah.com, or it's part of the brand new Summer Mega Bundle, which is currently on sale throughout the whole of June. To find out more about that, Check the description of this video where I've included a link with all of the wonderful summer designs. But for now, let's get started at making a giant summer sign. Once you've purchased the summer giant sign file, either from my shop individually or as part of the summer mega bundle, of which the links can be found in the description, then you need to unzip the download folder that it comes in. If you don't know how to do this, check the links in the description and click the link to the written tutorial version of this video and that has some extra information in there on how to unzip folders on Windows computers, Macs, tablets and phones. Once you've unzipped the folder, head on over to Cricut Design Space and start a new project. Go into Upload on the left and then Upload Image. Then you can click browse to find the file on your computer or you can drag and drop it in. Make sure you choose the unzipped version of the folder and then the file to upload is the one which starts SVG in the file name. So I drag and drop that in and then it might take a little while to load but once it does this is what it looks like. Press upload and then again it might be a little while but now we can click on it and then press add to canvas. For some reason it loads in a little bit smaller than I had intended. I'm not quite sure why that happens, but it's easy to fix. It is very close though, so if you do miss the step out by mistake, it doesn't matter. You wanna make sure the padlock icon is shut next to the width and height by clicking it. You might need to click it twice. Design space is being a little bit funny at the moment. But once it's closed, then go into the width box and type 20 inches and press enter. And then the height should automatically change to 10 inches. Even though that's a really big sign, it can still be cut from regular US letter, A4 or 12 by 12 card. I'm gonna show you this by looking down the layers panel until we get to the bottom layers of all of those green leaves. So you can see that these come in sections. So all of the background layers of green come in four sections and we'll be gluing these together to make the giant sign um, while still being able to cut it on our normal card. Before we cut it out, we need to add our wording. I'm gonna zoom out a little bit so I can see the whole sign. That was probably a bit too much. There we go and then go into text along the left and type out my word. Now, because I was uh, having a little practice of this video before I hit record, it has actually remembered the font that I was choosing. Um, but if you don't have your font already selected, then you can just select your word, go into the font drop down here and find what one you want to use. The one I'm using is a Cricut Access font and it's called Babette. The reason I like this one is that it's got nice thick letters, which means it's gonna be easy to cut out from cardstock, and the majority of the letters are actually touching. They are connected to each other, which means I've only got to stick two pieces of card together when I put it onto the front, rather than having to do each letter individually. If you want more than one word on your sign, then I recommend clicking it and then pressing duplicate and doing each word separately. And that's because otherwise, if you did it all on the same layer, it's gonna to get too long to be able to cut. 
and by duplicating it rather than going back into the text menu, that means this is exactly the same font and the same size. If you then want to resize all of your different words, just click one of them in the layers panel, press shift on your keyboard and choose the other ones, and then you can resize them all together and they all stay in proportion. I'm going to change mine though so it just says the word welcome and make that a bit bigger there. I want my welcome to be the same pink as the outside of the sign. To do that you can either click on it and go into the colour box at the top but this can be a little bit tricky to know exactly which colour to use. So an easier way to do it is to press colour sync on the top right of the screen and this splits out all of the layers by their colour. So now we can see that this pink is the one that we want. So let's look and find our text and you'll probably see that it's just the first letter. So mine says a W. I can drag this up and if you hold it over that top arrow of the scroll bar, it will go up through the other layers. Then I'm going to let go of my mouse when it's over that pink and it will change it to the exact same colour. Now you might notice on the text, especially if you're using a script font, that you can see little cut lines between each letter. Now you don't really need to worry about this because that's just showing on the screen. When you go to click make it, you should see that it will cut as one single cut. And in fact, let's test this. So let's go to make it. And this may take a few moments because there are a lot of different colours. Alright, let's find that bright pink. Here. This one. So you can see on this screen, it doesn't have those lines between the letters, which shows that this is all going to cut as one proper cut. So it's not going to cut the black lines that you can see. Oh, where's it gone? <laughs> it's just loading. Uh, it's not going to cut these little lines that you can see, so you don't need to worry about that. Now, this is a lot of different layers and colors. And if you don't have this many colors of cardstock, there is a way that you can simplify it. We'll go to color sync again and have a look through. So this shows you, you're gonna need four shades of green and then an orange, yellow, two shades of pink, and then various other colors down here. If you didn't have one of those colors, then you can play about with moving them over to a different color, um, which means that you can then have less colors overall. For example, let's say that I only had one shade of pink, so I'm going to make all of the other shades, the light shades, into, uh, let's go red instead. This is just an example for the video. So I'm going to click and drag these to red and you see how it changes it on the design. And now I don't have any of that specific light pink. It's just red instead. Now I wouldn't actually make the light pink into red because that looks a little bit ugly. That was just to show you that if you want to, you can change the colours around to simplify it so that you don't need as many shades when you go to cut it out. Alrighty, so I'm happy with this and how it's all looking. What I recommend doing before you cut it out is just saving your project with this link at the top just in case anything happens and you need to shut design space. Um, that means if you've saved it, you don't have to make any of the changes again. They'll all be there waiting for you. When you're ready to cut it out, click on make it. And just like we saw earlier, it will split it all out into the different colors. To change the paper size, go into the drop down on the left. I'm using all A4 card for mine as that's what's most readily available here in the UK. And you'll probably find that once you start changing the paper size, it does move it about a bit. If you want to try and use up less sheets of paper, you can click on an image, press the three little dots and click move object and then change it. So click one of the other mats and it must be the same color. So I can only choose from these three white ones for this. If you choose any of the others, then it will change the color of the cut, which we don't want. 
but I can have a go at that one click confirm and now it's moved it onto this first sheet and let's see there's quite a bit of room there so if I move this flower onto the second sheet make sure you click and drag it so that it's not touching anything else but now Cricut wanted me to use three sheets of white but I've moved it all about so now I only need two this one's now empty, which means when I click continue, this empty mat will disappear and I'll only need my two sheets of white. You do need to change the paper size for every single colour, so you'll have to go through each one, click on it on the left and then change the paper size in there. And also just have a little look, see if you can move things about and change it over to the other mats of the same colour to use less card. When you're happy with how everything is looking, press continue, that'll connect to your Cricut machine and then follow the on-screen instructions to get everything cut out from cardstock. Here are all of my layers cut out and I've just led them in the correct positions so I can check that I'm happy with all of the colours and I can make sure I haven't missed any little piece. Having all the bits in the right order will also make it easier to stick together because we're going to work in sections to do each little bit one at a time. So what I'm going to do now is move these little pieces apart but try and keep them roughly in position. So I'll start with the sunflowers and just moving them off to one side. Just all the little pieces. I'm going to try and take all of this green bit off together. Da, da, da. It's a delicate operation, but that actually worked pretty well. Um, so I'm just going to move all the bits off, trying to keep related bits together until I'm left with just the bottom row of green. Phew, so there we go, that took a little while. And now we're left with these four pieces. And this is our very bottom layer, and you know that because we've got the little triangles in the bottom of the cutouts. And this is how we're going to know how to line everything up. To stick these together, we need some glue. I'm using Kalal glue, which is my favorite because it glues really strong, it sticks well, and it dries quickly. And also it doesn't bend or warp the cardstock like some glues can do. And then I've put it into these needle tip applicator bottles that I get on Amazon. These are really good because they have teeny tiny little nozzles on them, which means it's going to be perfect for making this giant summer sign. So what we're going to do is line up these triangles and use that to know that we've got the pieces in position correctly. We'll take one of the ends and then your glue and we're going to run the glue along the edge making sure we don't go out any further than that triangle. So just one line of glue all the way up to the top and then take the next piece and we're going to overlap it so that the triangles in the corners perfectly line up with each other and then we can also line up the leaves along the top. So that way you've got a reference point at the top and the bottom to know how to line it up perfectly. And then moving on to the next one, we're gonna do the same thing. So a little row of glue, keeping to the left of that triangle, go right up into those leaves and then line this up so that triangle's lined up and those leaves at the top and be sure to take your time on this because if your bottom layer doesn't line up properly it means nothing on top of it will line up either so it is really really um, advisable to take your time on these bottom bits because it can't be changed later um, very easily anyway especially once you've glued it 
and it will have an impact on the rest of the sign if it's wrong. I'm now doing this final side and line up that triangle and the leaf at the top. I think mine will actually broke off a bit, which is why this isn't quite lining up right. Nope, I was just at the wrong angle. <laughs> there we go, it does line up. Okay, so that does line up perfectly with that little oval of the leaf. And here is my base piece. And what I'm going to do to make this extra sturdy, because it's got to hold all those other layers on top of it, is turn it upside down and then add some sticky tape down all of the join lines on the back. So just some regular old sticky tape. And then a nice big bit down all of the joins to make sure they're really well stuck. It doesn't matter if you get the tape over the triangles because we're going to be covering them up, but try not to get it over any of the other holes, otherwise you'll see it through. And then we'll turn that back the right way round. And this is now ready to add the next layer of green. I'm just getting my next layer of green into position by placing it over that bottom layer. I've not got any glue or anything on it yet. I'm just getting it into position to make sure I've got the right pieces. For this green, you can either use your glue or you can use 3D foam pads to give it some dimension. It is completely up to you. I think I'm going to glue it, only because it's so big that I don't want to use up so many foam squares getting that all stuck down. So now we know we've got the pieces right. Just going to move them apart a little. And then, I think I've managed to bend that. Oopsie. I'm going to start at the bottom. So turn this bit upside down and my glue and because this is the first bit I can put the glue all the way around it Oop, I'm throwing it everywhere I'm gonna put my glue all over again we need a good stick so that this can hold all those other layers on top of it and then line it up with what's already there and get it stuck down. I'll do the other bottom bit left, so uh, next, so turn it over. This is going to overlap this green piece a little bit. And that just means we don't have any of that bottom colour showing through if there was a little gap. So if you have been a little bit uneven with the bottom, this does help cover it up a bit. And now we're going to do exactly the same with the top two pieces. And now our two bottom layers are done. Let's move on to the next. This is going to cover up even more of those uh, leaves and give us some more detail, but this time I'm going to use my foam squares. However, to make it easier to put together, I'm going to glue it first. So let's move all of these, move my giant sign out of the way a moment. And then I'm going to glue all of these bits together. So you can kind of see where it's going to line up. Do that first so you know where to put your glue. Because you don't want to be able to see the glue coming out the other side. So just a thin line down that side will be fine. So line that up. And then do the same thing for the other pieces that match this layer of the green. I'm 
while my glue is still kind of wet so that I could wiggle it about if I wanted to I'm just gonna check that I've lined this up correctly so all of these patterns should line up still which they almost do I think I just need to pull that one out a bit there that's better all right time for the foam <laughs> this is going to be a lot of foam squares this is why I didn't want to do it on the um this paler layer because that would have been two full layers of foam which would have just been an awful lot here are my foam squares and these are quite small but you could use bigger ones and then I'm just going to place these all around the back of this layer and it will take me a while <laughs> What you want to make sure you do when you're adding the foam is put a really good amount on because this is going to have a lot of weight on top of it from the other layers and we need to make sure that it has a really good stick on it and it's not going to fall off. I'm starting by putting my foam squares around the edges and I'm also trying to make sure I go into any sticky out bits like the leaves on the edge. But what you also need to do is put your foam in the middle bits as well. So don't leave any big open spaces like this, as that means that if there's a big open space, once all the other weight is on top of this with the other layers, the cardstock would dome downwards like that. So you'd get kind of a curve in the middle of your sign. And it would still work, you know, but it will not look anywhere near as good as if you'd put the foam in the middle like I'm doing now so that everything on top of it's got that nice stable bottom for it to line up on. I've now got all my foam squares on so I can start peeling the tops off of them to reveal the stickiness underneath and to try and make it a bit easier for me to know which ones I've done going to start on the top left and then work my way from left to right. Okay, <laughs> that was an epic task. Now I can line this up and get it stuck down. What I'm doing first is just gently dropping it into place so that if it's not lined up, I can pick it up again and reposition it. But actually, I'm happy with that. So let's push down to seal all of those foam squares. We've got one more green layer that comes in um, four pieces. And then we'll move on to the easier bits. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do is, again, get this into position and I seem to have moved all the bits around when I was moving them off at the beginning so just want to make sure it's all correct like that this one you can either glue or foam I'm going to glue it because we've just done a foam layer and my hands need a little break from all of that picking off of the uh, bits of paper off the top. So I'm going to glue it. And this will work just like the last one we glued, where we're going to do one at a time to get them into position. I do not recommend doing what I'm doing and holding your glue on over your project as you're gluing. It kind of seems like a recipe for disaster if you were to drop the glue or spill it out. But I'm working on very limited table room right now. Uh, so I don't have much of a choice. Also, I kind of want to keep it in the shot so that you can still see what I'm doing. These giant signs do take quite a lot of cardstock to make them, 
But the benefit of that is not only do you get all of the beautiful layers, but they become really, really thick and sturdy, almost as if you'd made it out of poster board um, as you add all the layers on, which means when you display it, it will look lovely kind of propped up on a shelf or you could add some ribbon to the back perhaps and hang it. I've even seen some people with some of the other giant signs and they managed to seal it. I'm not quite sure how. But to make it kind of not rainproof because it's cardboard so it's never going to be fully rainproof but seal it so it can at least go outside some of the time probably if you're not in England like me because we have rain a lot in fact it's raining now <laughs> as I'm recording this so you wouldn't want to put this outside in England but maybe in some warmer countries where you don't get as much rain but this one's going to go up on uh, the shelves in our office so we can look at it every day and um, see all of the lovely bright summery flowers we've still got the spring sign up at the moment so I'll have to take that one down and just put it away until next year and then switch it out for the summer one. Okay. Line that last bit up. Here we are. Right, that is the hardest parts done, which is all of the ones that have four bits per layer. Uh, so now we're moving on to a little bit easier and this is just two. So we've got one for there and one for there. And this is going to make up the base of our sign that we're then going to stick the welcome text on. I'm going to glue this, but again this is another alternate one where you could do either. But I want to glue it because I want my pink frame to have some depth and dimension and be foamed. So for this one, I'm going to keep it simple with the glue. Next is the pink, which makes the outline of the sign. And this one I'll foam. So it's going to go there. But first, to make it easier to put the foam on, I'm going to glue the two bits together. So just a bit of glue down the edge of one of the bits and then overlap the other one and I'm not sure I trust myself to get this in the right place by eye on this one as there's not an awful lot to line it up against which is why I'm doing it on top of the sign so that I can use this edge over here to know where the bits go. Right. Okay, now we can turn it upside down. Do you know what? I think when I did that, I just moved, moved it. Nope, that still looks good. <laughs> okay, whoo. There we go. Let's turn it a bit more gently this time. And then once again, going to add my foam to the whole back of it making sure for bigger bits like this I get some foam in the middle now all the foam's on we can peel off the little tops to get the sticky There we go, so let's bring our giant sign back in, making sure I actually get it in the shot. <laughs> and then gently place this over the top, drop it down, and then if you're happy with it, push down to seal all of those foam squares. I love how this is looking already. There's so much dimension and colour in it and we've not even got any of the flowers on yet. 
When this is finished, it's going to be spectacular. Next, I'm going to add my wording, and that's because I think part of that W might end up being sort of um, covered by the green on top. So it'd be a bit more difficult to add on at the end. So let's put it on now. I'm going to glue it. If you've got multiple words, or if you're doing a font where the letters aren't joined, I very much recommend putting them all along the bottom before you start any gluing. Because if you just start with one letter, you might get to the end and realize that you can't fit everything on, um, which would be really, really sad when you've gone to all of this effort so far. So just plan it out, get all of the text into position before you start any of that glue. Tuck my W underneath where that leaf is going to go. And then this is where, I know you can't see what I'm doing, um, but this is where these needle tip bottles are just so helpful because this text is really thin, but my glue is just perfectly going around it and not making any mess on my table. One letter left. Okay. This is where I get glue all over my fingers though. Got a little glue string there, that's not ideal. I'm sure it'll rub off. <laughs> I'm just gently dabbing this because I don't want my glue to smush out the sides. It'll look messy, so just a light tap to get that all stuck. And there we have it. That is all of the big bits done. Uh, well, actually no, I guess there's still some green. Let's do the green next before we start celebrating. <laughs> these are the two bits of green I was talking about. And for these ones, hmm. Again, this one is kind of optional. I think I'm going to foam it just so that the leaves that are on the bottom of the edge of the sign have some pop out and some dimension from it. Because I guess if you were looking at it in real life, the leaves would be out further. You know, they've got some depth to them. So let's try and replicate that with our foam squares. This time I'm not sticking the pieces together, the two green bits, before I add it to the sign, just because they are that little bit smaller. Um, I'm just going to need to be a little bit careful when I do the second bit that I don't add any foam on the piece that's going to overlap along the join line. I'll show you what I mean in just a minute, once I have pulled the tops off of all of these pesky foam pads. So now I've stuck that one down for this one. Oh, I've stuck it on top. That was clever. <laughs> Let's just pull that out. Um, <laughs> for this one, you see where it's going to overlap on this B here. So I don't want to add any foam on this bit. Let's just Bring it up to the camera. Focus. I don't want to add any foam on the bottom of this bit because that needs to sit on top of there, which is already foamed. But the rest of it is all fair game for my foam squares. Bring this one back and then I'm going to add my glue just a little bit down these leaves so that the other half of the green will be stuck to it. And then get this all lined up. Gently drop it down. And then just get that glue in place. I haven't actually lined that up amazingly well, but it doesn't matter because it's going to have the bumblebee on top. So you won't see that messy join line. 
Okay, now we can celebrate that all of the big bits aren't done. The next step is what I enjoy most, which is all of the little tiny decorative bits to go on top. Now this bit is up to you. You can either make them all one at a time and then bring them onto your design. But what I prefer to do is to get all of the layers and place them on the sign now, just gently dropping each one into position. And the reason I like doing this is it means I know I'm sticking everything in the right place. Especially when it comes to things like the um, flowers like I'm doing now. There's lots of them on this design and I don't want to accidentally stick um, the wrong ones in the wrong places. So I'm going to do it this way. I'm getting a little bit confused with myself which is why I'm doing it this way, so that's okay. That one goes there. I'm not getting it 100% lined up, like that's not the right way round for that um, flower, but as long as it's roughly there, so I know where each bit is um, supposed to go, that's really all I'm trying to do here. All right, time to start sticky sticking. <laughs> Where shall we begin? I think with the nice big sunflowers. Let's take this one and I'll move that out of the way. And this has four layers to it. It might look like this is multicolored. <laughs> Let me have a look. You can see it looks like there's a pattern on there. Um, if you're seeing that, it's because I cut this out a few weeks ago and I really stupidly left it by the window. So um, unfortunately, some of my card has been a little bit bleached by the sun, um, which is why that looks like it's got a pattern on it. Um, that was just a really silly move by me. Uh, and your card will not look like that, hopefully. But it does go to show just how strong that sun can be, even coming through a glass window. Um, I've, and it's really shaded actually where it was being kept. So there's lots of trees outside. So I wouldn't have thought it would have faded that much that quickly. But I guess that just goes to show you um, what that sun can do. Okay, I'm using foam for this layer. And these sunflowers are pretty tricky to line up. So that bleaching's actually done me a favour. Um, so you might have to sort of turn it and wiggle it and work it out to try and find out where the petals line up. And then for the solid layer of the sunflower, I'm going to add a couple of bits of foam. And again, this one, I mean, it does line up perfectly if you're really fussy. I am not. So I'm just going to put it on there any which way. And then for the seed layer, um, I'm going to glue this one because I would not be able to get my foam pads in those gaps. And I probably should try and line this up. It is tricky. <laughs> I probably should have done them symmetrical, but didn't. Uh, and maybe here for some time. You know what? That is not quite right, but it's close enough. If I put it up to the camera, gonna focus you can see it looks pretty spot on so I'll stick with that one and then I'm now going to glue it on to here so I'm gonna do the glue on the green which means it will be easier to try and line up those petals lots of glue and then I can hold it above until I've worked out 
exactly what way around it should go. <laughs> so it does line up perfectly with that green. You just might need to do a little bit of wiggling around until you get there. All right, next I'll do the orchid. This one comes in five pieces and be really careful with that little pollen, the yellow bit, as it's super tiny. Um, so for this one, hmm, I think I'll foam, 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 the second pink layer. Can you tell that I kind of make this up as I go along? <laughs> it all seems to end up okay, so hopefully you can uh, forgive me. This one's much easier to line up than that sunflower. Then a little bit of foam on this white one too, but just down the bottom. Don't try and get your foam up in all those stems. Just there. And then the petal on top I will glue. Otherwise it will be too deep and look a bit weird. So that fits on there. And then finally we've got the pollen in the middle. And if this is a bit too fiddly, you can leave it off. It's just that little extra detail, but it is an essential. So small. I think I've done that upside down. I have. <laughs> Never mind. You can't really tell. It's fine. <laughs> All right. Let's glue this one on. And there. Flower two. Done. Next, I'll do this little yellow one. And there are three of these. One, two, three, yep. Yeah. And they all go together in the same way. So you can either glue it or you can foam it. This one is a little bit narrow, so you might prefer to glue. But I'm just gonna do two little foam squares in there. And then dab that one on. And I'm going to glue the base. Otherwise, I think it would just have a bit too much depth on it. So that one's there. And then glue this onto there. Awesome. And then I'm just gonna do these two as well. So I'm just gonna pause the video and do these two because they're exactly the same as the one I've just done. Okay, here it is. And I actually took advantage of the pause time to just work through a few of the other repeated bits. So I've done the other yellow flowers, as I said. I also did the other pink flower because it works in the same way. Even though it looks slightly different, um, the layers go together in the same way. And I've also done the other sunflower, but I haven't done the little bumblebee yet. Um, and then I've done these two daisies, but I've still got this one to show you. And then I have also done most of the blue flowers. These two bees, because I've got the one over here I can show you with. And I have also done the ladybird. So for the ladybird, you just need to stick all the layers together with glue and then use a bit of foam to stick it onto the sign. I just thought, you know, you've been listening to me for a while. <laughs> You're probably getting bored of my voice. I'll just show you the very last of the blue flowers. So I glued the top layer to the one underneath. There we go. And then for all of them, I've done it exactly the same way. Just a little bit of foam pad on there and stick it on so it's got that nice bit of dimension. Okay, let's do Mr. Bumblebee. I've actually got these in the wrong order. Look, it should be... Oh no, that is right. It just wasn't quite lined up. You see, little, tiny little bumblebee. <laughs> so for all of the bumblebees, you want to glue all the layers together and be really careful with the antenna. They're very, very small. So just a little bit of glue 
on my white bumbly bee. And stick that on there. And then the black one on top. Doo, doo, doo. There we go. And then when that's all lined up, just gonna give it a second for that glue. I'm gonna foam square it onto the sunflower. And I used foam squares for the other two bumblebees as well to give it that dimension from um, the little bits underneath. There we go, Mr. Bumblebee. For the daisies, these are nice and simple. Foam squares for the back of the white. I like these because they're very minimal layering. <laughs> okay, let's get that one in there. And then I'm also going to use foam for the yellow middle because they're definitely big enough to have that foam on. So tap that one on there. Okay, we have three bits left. Butterfly, this flower, and the dragonfly. So I'll go with the butterfly to start. This is quite a lot of layers to it. But it'll be fairly quick to make because they're all going to be glued. And the reason we're gluing this rather than using any foam is because the holes in the layers are quite small. So if you used foam to give this dimension, you'll find that the shadowing that will naturally appear between that raised layer will um, sort of overpower the colour that's coming through and it'll just look grey and not like our wonderful butterfly colours. So by adding glue instead, you don't get that shadowing. Uh, it'll just look nicer. Get you that one on there. So you can see you've got all of those lovely colours. And then for the middle of the butterfly, it's up to you if you want to um, use glue or foam. I'm just going to cut some of my foam a little bit and I will use foam. I'm going to put it straight on here and then oh, careful not to bend his antennas again. Put that one on. And then um, a little bit more foam to stick it on there. If you've made any of my other giant signs, which one was your favourite and why? This one is very, very similar to the spring one um, with the whole flowers and how the base goes together. So I think they would actually look really nice displayed together if you had room for two. They would match really well. Okay, oh, I've been dreading this one. <laughs> this one has so many layers and they're really hard to line up. So fair warning, this is gonna be the worst. I'm gonna try and take it apart in its different sections. Um, there we go. So the layers with the little cutout petals those ones will be glued. So let's turn that over. Add some glue. I'm gonna try and get my glue around those border bits so that it's not too delicate once it's stuck. And now the tricky bit, oh, Wow, I've never, never managed to do it that quickly before. There we go, that's all lined up. I've got glue all over my fingers and it's coming off on the uh, flowers. So next is this one. And this will be a foam square one. 
so the solid layers in this flower are foamed. And this matches really nicely with the dragonfly layered design that's included in the summer bundle. So if you've already got that summer bundle, then check out the dragonfly design. If you haven't got the bundle, why not? <laughs> no, I'm only kidding. Um, if you haven't got the bundle, then um, check the description of the video and find out more. Um, or if you did want that dragonfly design, it is available to purchase separately in my shop. So I'm gonna add the glue to the back of the next layer, which is the one with the sort of cut out petals. And then try lining it up again. Ooh. <laughs> hmm. Oh, oh, we got it. It's a winner. This probably isn't really actually any more different, difficult than the sunflowers. Um, it just seems like it because it's smaller. All right, next we've got the solid white one and this will be a foam layer. And you cannot really see what I'm doing because it's a white flower on a white table. <laughs> okay. And now we play the line up game. I think I had it right to start with. Oh no, that's right. There we go. Um, and then one more glue, which is this outline one. If you wanted to, um, for this one to make it easier, you could leave off all of these outline ones and just do the solid layers. It'll still look completely beautiful, but it'll be a whole lot easier to put together. And then finally, a little bit of foam for that bit in the middle. And just like with the sunflowers, there is a right way round for this but I am not gonna look for it. I'm just gonna stick it on like that. And then glue it to the front. Because this has got so many layers in it, um, I'm not gonna use the foam to make it stand out. I'm just gonna glue it on. Again, do not do this. Do not hold your glue over your project because if you do, and I very nearly did, and dropped a load of glue down the side, it will damage your project, which you've just spent a very long time on. Can you tell I'm kind of telling myself off here? <laughs> Being silly. Okay, that one lines up. Beautiful. Now we just have Mr. Dragonfly. Okay, this is three layers. And I'm going to glue all of them for the same reason as the butterfly. The gaps in this are small and I don't want the shadow to be overpowering. Just run down there. That's one. And then for the bit down the middle, again, I'm going to glue it. Um, because although I could fit my foam, because it's got that little oval in the middle, and because it doesn't include the eyes of the dragonfly, I don't think it would look right foamed. I think it looks better glued. But I will use my foam to make it stand out from the background. So I turn it upside down. I think I just moved the glue. Getting a bit impatient now. <laughs> Right, the last piece. Du, du, du. There. <laughs> all right, my giant sign is all done. Look at all of those beautiful pieces. It's so pretty. And yes, it was a lot of cardstock. It was a lot of foam and glue, and it was a lot of time, but absolutely worth it and this is going to look absolutely gorgeous in our office 
I hope you enjoyed this video on how to make my giant summer sign. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my YouTube channel for loads more Cricut and craft tutorials. Thank you for watching. Bye.